On today's episode of Locked on Wild, deal or no deal for players with expiring contracts for the Minnesota Wilds. You're Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we'll take a look at why the Minnesota Wild must make turning the XL Energy Center into an advantage a priority once again. After seeing what we saw in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs, we'll also talk about the number of former Wild players that are in the postseason. You can fill an entire roster with former Wild players alone. And we'll take a look at expiring contracts for the Minnesota Wild, and we'll play Deal or No Deal. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, joined by Alex Micheletti here for today. And uh, Alex, the Wilds, obviously not in the postseason. I'm going to consider it a victory Micheletti Monday anyway, because the playoffs are back and we got treated to some insane chaos throughout the uh, first weekend of the playoffs. We get Dallas and Vegas getting going here tonight, but um, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, Every single home team in not only the NHL playoffs, but the NBA playoffs too. Every single home team (laughs) won their first game. Just unreal. And you go from Winnipeg to Vancouver to Florida to Boston. Every single arena packed loud as hell. It was absolute chaos all weekend long, and I enjoyed every second of it. Yeah, so much fun, especially those Canadian crowds. And in Vancouver, hadn't uh, had a playoff home game in nine years, so you know they were ready and riled up to go. They were the last uh, last game of the of the day, and so you know those fans were tailgating and getting getting ready. And so they brought the energy. What a what a comeback for them! And what two goals in twelve seconds? And yep. <laughs> yeah, it was the Dakota Joshua game. That was that was unbelievable. Yeah, and. Yeah, just so much, so much fun. I I can't wait. You know, this is, you know, the regular season was the best in a long time that it's ever been. And now now it's gotten to a whole nother level with with the playoffs here. And it's crazy, too, because all of the games, regulation, like we didn't have a single overtime game. We only had, and I would say there was only one blowout because... Mm. The Washington, New York Rangers, and the Islanders Hurricanes games were actually relatively close for mm. the first like period or two. <laughs> that Boston Toronto game was a mess. Like you, you the... knew when Will uh, Nylander was ruled out that you know Toronto was just gonna yeah, yeah it was not and going into Boston yeah, they're fired up and yeah they were they were hitting hitting everybody and uh, you know you know Charlie Coyle out there shutting down Austin Matthews yeah it was it was you know. Quite, quite that, quite you know, quite the game there too. The big point that I wanted to kind of pull away because it's funny how so much that um, went wrong for the Wild this year are like critical things to what playoff teams do. But the one that I want to focus on because it was just so apparent is that the Wild need to get back to the point where they are giving the fans reasons to get loud. It's not like. It's never an issue of the fans not turning out because they do. The Wild were number one in the league in attendance this year by uh, they they more than sold out every game. And so it's not a question of the fans showing out to support the team. It's a question of the team giving the fans something to cheer about. And we just saw way too often this year where you'd be in a tight game early on. 
not even necessarily like a, a two to one game, a scoreless game through the first period. And then everybody kind of gets, they get antsy. They're waiting for that first goal for the, the wilds to kind of get everybody going. It never comes. The opposing team scores. And then all of a sudden everybody is just, you can hear a pin drop in there. Home ice has to be a top priority. And that means it's not easy, but that means you have to be, especially at home, you have to be the one that draws first blood. You have to be the one that hits that first punch to get your fans into it. Yeah, as we know in hockey, you have, you have the last change at home too. So you can dictate matchups and uh, just a lot, a lot of times this, this season, the effort wasn't there. I mean, you can you can be injured and, and be missing guys, but at least uh, at least show effort. And especially yeah. at home with with how much money people are paying for, for tickets and, and parking and, and concessions. You know, you, they deserve a better effort, you know, at, at the X, because like you said, they win or lose, they continue to show up. And that's that's why we're this the state of hockey. But, yeah. uh, you know, there was just too many times where. Krill was the only one that showed up, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, like Russo just alluded in his latest article in Joe Smith, uh, uh, they got to show, you know, Krill that everybody else wants to win. You know, it can't just be him, you know, and, right. uh, you know, he, um, even the last couple of games, it was, it was him showing out, you know, going all out hundred percent effort scoring, even when they were eliminated. So that, you know, that shows how much, this guy wants to win and he's got to have his teammates there uh, to have that same will and belief, you know, they it's in them, but they got to, they got to show it. Um, and like you said, you got to win your home games. You know, if you can't win your home games, then, then you're doomed. Yeah. You're in a bad spot. Like yeah. just look at the, just look at the home records for these um, Western conference teams, Dallas, number one overall seed. They were 26, 11 and four at home. Winnipeg, 27, 11, and three at home. Colorado, 31, nine, and one at home. Even Nashville, 23, 16, and two. Vancouver, 27, nine, and five. Edmonton, 28, nine, and four. The Los Angeles Kings did not take advantage of home ice. They were 22, 12, and seven. Uh, Calgary Flames, we're not a playoff team. Why did I go to Calgary? Uh, <laughs> Vegas, 27, 12, and 2. So sizable advantage. And that means doing those extra things to get off to an early start, but also to rally to tie, to getting those turning one point into two. Like at home, that is just, it's just a requirement. Like it's not optional. It's something that you just have to do if you're going to be a good team. And I go back to last year against the Dallas Stars. Game three was the loudest game I've ever been at in my life. And I've been to Vikings games. I've been to I've been to every team in the state. And I've been to games at other states too. Loudest game I've ever been at. Because the fans had the entire day. It was a late game. They had the entire day to kind of get lathered up, and uh, they were just – it was deafening noise from the opening puck drop. And you you don't – you mean to tell me that you don't think that that rattled Dallas? It for sure did. Yeah. it's uh, Look at – we were just talking about the Vancouver-Nashville game. That – that crowd was absolutely uh, erupted when when they came back, especially that uh, the the first Dakota uh, um, Joshua goal. That was that was unbelievable. It was yeah. it was so cool. And and Winnipeg, I mean, they had the fans outside too, and the the flyover with the jet. That was that was incredible. Yeah, it's uh, you know the the home crowd can make such a such a big difference too, especially on power plays and penalty kill. They they get fired up, and if you can. If you can score, that just gets the building rocking. Yeah. The fact that they were able to seamlessly transition from a Gorgiev chant to pull the goalie. Yeah. Savage crowds. Amazing. But yeah, you know, that's that's what the Canadian crowds do. They they know their hockey and they they can get underneath uh you know the skin of the of the opposing team for sure. It's it, it, I mean, wild fans in game three. Every time Ryan Suter touched the puck, it was a Suter chant. It was, and the, like, 
the part about it too is that energy is infectious. Like you, that radiates down onto the ice and it's hard not for you to get like, people can probably see on YouTube, me just cracking a smile as you're talking about that because it, it amps you up. It psychs you up to do what you need to do when your fans are screaming their lungs out. And yep. so we got to get from 2015 and six, you got to take at least probably eight of those losses and turn them into wins. Now, the Wild are not going to – it's going to be a tough road for the Wild to be a playoff team next year. I think we can all agree on that. But when the Wild do get to that point where they are, you know, moving up the chain, moving up to being a contender, home ice has to be defended at all costs. Yeah, it's one of the best arenas in in the league, and so you have to have to take advantage of you know playing in a in a rink like that with the fans that always are there for you, and no no matter what, and you know you can become a fan favorite really really fast here. If you, you can if you can be a hero if you can lead a team to a deep playoff run. You'll be remembered for forever. So that you know that's they they have it in them. They can do it and. I know they're hampered by the buyouts, but you know it's 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 there for the taking to at least yeah. at least get a wild card spot, the last spot in, um, you know, and then you know then once once the buyout money's is off the books, watch out because you know Craig Leopold is an owner that always will spend to the to the cap. You know, he's the mm -hmm. opposite of Alex Morello. So, <laughs> oh my God. I I don't have I don't even have the energy to dive into that dude because. What a, what a horrible press conference! Oh, that was that was something else. Um, yeah, like I, I I have so many thoughts on on Morello that people will be able to hear in the national show because we're gonna we're gonna dive into that heavy uh, for tomorrow's episode. Did you know, Alex, that you can field an entire roster off of former Minnesota Wild players that are in the postseason this year? We will run through the list. Brett Marshall, our uh, friend over at Sound the Foghorn, put together a list of former Wild players. And so we'll take a look and uh, we'll see if that roster can beat this one <laughs> as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. It is playoff time the nba the nhl getting into full swing for the first round of the playoffs major league baseball also up and rolling and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed that is 150 bucks whether you win or lose you can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. For instance, Dallas Vegas tonight, they get their series started. You can bet on either team. You win or lose, you get 150 bucks in bonus bets to use for the rest of the week. Playoffs are, it's going to be coming at you heavy so make sure that you get that first bet in the hopper so that you can get 150 bonus bucks guaranteed that is fanduel.com slash locked on make your first bet an automatic win fanduel america's number one sports book today's episode of locked on wild also brought to you by policy genius folks the world of life insurance is daunting even for people that know what they're looking for, can you imagine having to navigate the life insurance market without having a clue what you need, what sort of coverage you're looking for? Policy Genius is here to help make that much easier. They can save you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. 
Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Reminder, folks, the Locked on NFL mock draft is available right now. You can find the ultimate six-episode series on Locked on NFL Draft to hear who the local Locked on experts are picking for every NFL franchise, including the Minnesota Vikings, with live reaction from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft, available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Alex, let's look at this. Brett Marshall of Sound the Foghorn put a list together of former wild players that are currently in the playoffs. And it is it is quite the list. We start with the New York Islanders who currently employ Cal Clutterbuck and Mike Riley. Carolina Hurricanes have Brett Burns. The Toronto Maple Leafs, Connor Dewar and Ryan Reeves. The Bruins, Charlie Coyle, Pat Maroon. The Tampa Bay Lightning, Mitchell Chafee and Matt Dumba. The Florida Panthers have Dmitry Kulikov. The Capitals <laughs> have Darcy Kemper. The Avs have Zach Parisi and Brandon Duhame. Winnipeg has Nino Niederreiter. The Dallas Stars with Ryan Suter and Sam Steele. The Kings with Kevin Fiala and Cam Talbot. The Predators with Gustav Nyquist. How about Gustav Nyquist this year? A career year in terms of points. He had, I believe, around 25 goals this season. Played top-line minutes almost the entire year. Was healthy almost the entire year. Looked great last night, too. Just... <laughs> and then you got Jason Zucker gets the scoring started for the Predators. Oh, and... Vancouver is employing the same third pairing the Wild did two years ago with Carson Soucy and Ian Cole. As Brett notes, there are 22 former Minnesota Wild players on 13 of 16 of this year's playoff teams. Vegas, the Rangers, and the Oilers are the only three teams without a former Minnesota Wild player. Um, you can So you got 22 players, full roster, full roster that you can employ of former wild players and let's just let's just do this let's, <laughs> let's just let's just have some fun here here is the lineup that brett put together fiala coil nyquist niederreiter steel zucker clutterbuck dewer duhame parisi chafee maroon then Suter, burns cole and Susi, riley and kulikov Cam Talbot as your starter. Does that team beat the current Minnesota Wild roster? Oh boy. <laughs> um, I think it's close, but here's, it's close. here's the thing. I think. The I don't current, trust Cam Talbot at all. No. <laughs> I think the current Wild roster has better center depth. Yeah. For sure. Yes. Um. Bottom. <sighs> The bottom six would be the decider, I feel like. Mm. But I do still think this team beats that one. Because yeah. Kar Kirill. Yeah, <laughs> that's the deciding factor. And Talbot or, or Kemp Kemper's the backup. And, uh, <laughs> those, <laughs> those are your two options. Uh, uh, Yikes. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that would be about a it'd be about a seven to six. <laughs> seven to six win for the Minnesota Wild. Cal Clutterbuck would finish with 19 hits. <laughs> Just chaos. Then Just again, the body. every single player on that former wild player team would score against the wild. So it'd probably end up being like a 22 to <laughs> six loss because <laughs> all former players do is score against the Minnesota wild. Kulikov hat trick. <laughs> oh. It is interesting though. Like it, it, it is kind of cool to see all these guys still, kick in still doing their thing i would take carson Susi and ian cole right now yeah over the uh the current third pairing obviously a guy like gustav nyquist would have done wonders for this team i know there wasn't money to do it right. we know that but just but, just swap him and johansson how much of a oh difference my God. 
they're probably a playoff team. <laughs> they are probably a playoff team. <laughs> if only they could get them on a you know smaller, smaller my, deal. But my Monday is ruined. <laughs> like what it let me just see. Let me let me just look because I'm curious. Gustav Nyquist had 23 goals, 52 assists. He had 75 points. He played 81 games. <laughs> yeah, it's just all right. I need to move off this bit because I'm starting to get <laughs> I'm starting to get sad. Um, so as far as who to root for, well, there are some uh there are some options. Um I still, I still am not necessarily picking a cup winner this year because I just want to take it all in, yeah, um, without having any bias rooting interests. I'm just out here for the chaos, and good lord, did we get it! Uh, let's finish on a wild angle, Alex. We can just take a look at the roster right now. There are some players that have expiring contracts. We're just going to play stay or go, deal or no deal. Do you keep these guys? Do you let them walk? We'll uh, we'll talk about it as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. The weather is getting nicer. Minnesota Twins getting their season going a little on the slow side, but still, Target Field is the absolute best to go watch a game and enjoy the nice weather. You could also try to sneak into uh, game two of the first round series between the Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. But if you know the last minute ticket buying experience, you know there are a lot of headaches associated with it, whether it be just exorbitant fees, obstructed seats. Game time is here to erase all of those headaches. Game time offers you last minute deals plus seat views a panoramic view from whatever seat you are about to buy and no more do you have to worry about those fees that pop up at checkout game time shows you what your tickets will cost before you hit the checkout line they also offer your uh, lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, make sure that you uh, stay tuned after today's episode for a sneak peek at the 24-7 streaming channel, Locked on Sports Today, which brings you all of the hottest news in the sporting world without any of the screaming. Locked on Sports Today, 24-7 on YouTube. You can stay tuned after today's episode to uh, check that out if you have not already. All right, Alex, let's look at these contracts. The Wilds currently have these players that will be uh, coming off of the books. Jake Lucchini, Mason Shaw, Alex Goligoski, Declan Chisholm, Dakota Mermis, and a whole mess of youngsters. Adam Beckman, Sammy Walker, uh, uh, Adam Raska, Jujar Kara, Stephen Fogarty. <laughs> now we're really dipping down in here. Will Butcher, Simon Johansson, Zane McIntyre, and Hunter Jones. Uh, let's start up at the top. Deal or no deal, Jake Lucchini. Uh, I would, I would try to see if he wants a two way, you know, you know, stick him, stick him in Iowa. I mean, he, he did his, his, his role up here. He yeah. didn't, didn't score at all, but, uh, you know, he was reliable. I guess he could say, uh, we could uh, try to see if, if, uh, if he wants to, 
wants to come back on a on a two way deal. I don't think you give him a one way. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. He might want to try to test the market after he had a decent season with the Wild. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting because didn't get a ton in the scoring department. He played like he played around thirty or forty games, I think. So then the question becomes. So like you said, does somebody see enough from that to offer him a legit NHL deal? I think the only way he comes back is if he is amenable to a two, a two-way contract. So I'd be fine with it for depth. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if he's playing on if he's playing on the fourth line for a majority of the games next year, we we have had problems again. So <laughs> yes. I'll say I'll say as depth, sure, but um, beyond that, I, I would rather just the Iowa portion. Uh, Mason Shaw, this is an interesting one because he worked his way back, fourth ACL tear. He got himself onto the ice for the Minnesota Wild at the end of the season. Now Shaw is arbitration eligible, so are we going deal or no deal with Mason Shaw? Man, this is such a tough one because it seems like there just isn't a roster spot for him. You know, even though he played a little bit at the end of the year here, it uh, it might it might be time for for him to to move on. Even though he's a he's a favorite of of Bill Guerin, uh, I just don't. Where do you plug him in the lineup? You know, especially if you you try to move uh, you know Freddie and Johansson down a little bit. Uh, you know, their goal is to sign a top six winger uh, to put in that left wing spot. So mm -hmm. it's just the, the roster spots are kind of just, you know, <laughs> there isn't a whole lot of room for him unless, you know, he's an extra forward or, you know, you know, another, another Lucini type deal where you get a, get a two way. Yeah. Cause you, as of right now, you've got 14 forwards on the roster. And so you need to, so maybe the, you free up a spot and maybe Shaw's your 13th for the season, I guess would be a way to do that. I, I'm of the same belief. Like if he's amenable to a two year or two way deal, I would do it. What I imagine will happen is the wild will go to arbitration. If they mm -hmm. can't come to an agreement on a two way, um, I would imagine that's the route they go. But yeah, like I, I roster spots, like you yes. said, <laughs> I just would rather see those spots filled otherwise. Um, but I guess we'll see. Alex Goligoski. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. over. Yeah, it's it's over. And, you know, I, I don't think he's going to find a spot anywhere else in the league. No. So I think this is the... This is the end of the run for him, and uh, you know he's a smart guy. So you know we could definitely see him be a part of the you know if it's not the wild uh, front office uh, somewhere around the league. I, I I think that's what that's what he wants to do. I found that interesting that it seemed like he was pegged as the most likely to be a future GM of any of the players on the Minnesota Wild roster, and so. If he retires, I think that's probably the next step that he takes is he just goes into the front office as like an assistant GM and look at what? look at all the guys that they've recently hired. I mean, Carl Hagland and and Derek Stepan. I mean, so they're they're Bill Guerin's clearly given some former NHL players that are fresh out of the game spots uh, in the front office. And hey, they don't they don't have assistant GMs right now either. So it yeah. wouldn't wouldn't shock me to see him try to help uh, uh garen in that part of, of things i would say here is most likely because obviously he's from here mm -hmm. but um arizona would be utah would be intriguing too or yeah. <laughs> eventually the other arizona team that is maybe gonna have i don't know yeah, he played for arizona so yeah that would that would that would make sense we'll uh we'll see um let's go to what i think should be the priority now with Mark Andre Fleury coming back. I think the guy that's got to be a priority from a re-signed department is Declan Chisholm. He yeah. is a restricted free agent. He's arbitration eligible. I'd like to see the Wild try to hammer out a multi-year deal. I think he showed. Honestly, I was really impressed by what we saw with Chisholm all season. He is very good. Like it's it's not even that he shows upside. He's just he's good. 
at running a power play. Like, yeah, he, he's great at it. Well, it's amazing. We, I mean, we've talked about this multiple times, but the fact that Winnipeg kept Logan Stanley over him made, made no sense. And, uh, they, the wild, they need power play guys on, you know, on the back end because it, you, you would rather have him out there than, you know, at this point in Jared Spurgeon's career, he's not really a power play guy. So you at yeah. least need him and Faber, you know, you need two, two defensemen, uh, you know, to run both. Uh, both units so you know he he's fit the bill and uh he came in uh at, at the perfect time they were really struggling on the on the power play and he he helped that so yeah brilliant uh whatever scout saw Declan Chisholm you know credit uh credit to the wilds uh you know you know pro scouts that was that was great uh great call by them to to pounce on on Chisholm big tip of the cap final one at least on the NHL roster, Dakota Mermis. I here's here's my thoughts on this, and I've I've said this on multiple live shows since the season ended, <laughs> since the season was wrapping up. I think Mermis showed well enough this year that some team is going to offer him a fully guaranteed NHL contract, and I don't know if the Wilds can you match that. No, well, they're they're locked in with Merrill, and unless they can move Merrill off, you know, Merrill's going to be the seventh defenseman. And just think, Dakota Mermis uh, before the start of the season was going to be the Iowa Wild captain, and yeah. he, he he couldn't play down. You know, they they sorely missed him down there because they they had a tough season. But uh, yeah, he especially in the second half, he really showed um, that he you know he deserves a you know an NHL spot, and so. Yeah, I think, as we know, there's so many teams out there that need quality defensemen that just, you know, don't turn over the puck or just steady. And, you know, he can he can play at third pairing D uh, anywhere, you know, any 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 team is looking for that. And so uh, I think yeah. he'll be, uh, you know, a hot commodity this this summer. And, uh, you know, he's such a good person, too. I mean, he's good, good locker room, you know, guy. And so. Uh, that that clearly is a is a factor too when it comes to free agents. Unless the Wild want to make him the seventh defenseman. Yeah, and... I mean, if if you can make a move, um, we you know we've we've hinted, uh, you know the <laughs> the writing on the, is on the wall. You know there isn't a whole lot of you know things that they can do trade wise, but uh, you know the pressure is going to be on Bill to to do something this summer. Yeah. So uh, you know you know we've always heard the the Rossi rumors, but uh, I mean there. <laughs> Uh, the the big thing would you know would be Gustafson, so that could yeah. create more space and maybe try to throw a defenseman in there too. Um, so yeah, we'll it's going to be interesting to see if Bill Guerin makes the moves he has to, as opposed to the moves he wants to, because I feel like that's going to be the way that this kind of gets moved in the right direction is making some of those tough moves that he himself kind of put this team in this spot by locking in all these guys so now he gets to decide what to where to go with them that's a that's a topic for another show um and so that's where we'll leave it here for today but thank you all as always listeners for tuning in here to today's episode of lockdown wild whether you listen to our audio version of the show or you listen right here on youtube thank you for tuning in each and every day the off season continues to roll along we are not stopping until we get to the start of next season in which we'll just start all over again. <laughs> so make sure to tune in, make sure that you don't miss out on any new episodes here throughout the week and uh, make sure to hit the like button on today's episode before you head out for the day. We got you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the locked on podcast network.